Now, this was actually an episode that I was looking forward to for a while. The Mark Hamill episode, I was dubbing it because, you know, Mark Hamill plays the bad guy. Now, the plot of this is, you know, it. there's a new villain in town, a younger villain named the Trickster, who is basically playing these Joker-esque pranks on on the town. Like, like for instance, he he drops a whole bunch of bombs down on the city via via parachute and and little you know presents little present boxes so so that's just one example of of this guy's this guy's method of attack but it turns out that this guy is is somewhat of a plagiarist in that in that he is actually taking the identity and the whole gimmick of a criminal from about 20 20 20 something years ago who is also named the trickster and who is also played by Mark Hamill. Now you're probably thinking anyone who anyone who's familiar with with the history behind this this particular uh, casting choice or anyone who's familiar with with the 90s Flash animated or Flash TV show will know that Mark Hamill actually played the trickster in the Flash in the original Flash TV show that was over 20 years ago. So very somewhat of a meta joke in that they cast Mark Hamill as the older version of the trickster and in addition they have John Wesley Shipp in this episode as as Barry Allen's dad who ultimately gets kidnapped uh, taken hostage by the trickster so very very meta in in terms of the scenario but it never breaks the fourth wall it never really winks at the camera going like get it get it no they everything is played very straight now, this was an episode that I really enjoyed, not just because of the development that we got with with Harrison Wells and the whole mystery behind the reverse flash and, you know, what happened that night of Nora Allen's murder, but in addition, we had a really great villain in The Trickster. Now, first of all, first of all, uh, getting back to the development, this is a spoiler alert, but, but this whole flashback sequence where we actually learn the history of Eobard Thawne, Eobard Thawne or whatever, Whatever, however you say his name, I know his name, but but how he came here from the future, battled the Flash, and that somehow somehow took away his ability to access the Speed Force, so he couldn't get back to his own time, and how he and how he basically singled out Harrison Wells. Over the course of this flashback, we learn we learn why he singled out Harrison Wells, how he and why Harrison Wells is the Reverse Flash now, when a different guy was wearing the suit. A seemingly different guy was wearing the suit in the flashback so we learned that and that was that was a really good twist that that really propelled us further in in this in this mystery a mystery that was already one of the most fascinating plot threads on the show and by extension seeing Barry grapple with you know whether or not to fully trust uh, Dr. Wells in this episode was really not only provided some great opportunities for for dramatic acting from Grant Gustin, but in addition, in addition, really really strengthened the relationship between the characters. And you know, and you know, are they are they really enemies, or are they, or could they have the potential to be re really really kindred spirits? Because basically, Harrison Wells talks Barry through the ability to to alter his molecular molecular structure basically vibrates so fast that he could pass through solid objects and that gets the bomb off his wrist which by the way that w this was this was straight out of justice league doom for me because 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 you know the contingency plan that batman came up with in justice league doom is basically exactly like like the thing that the trickster puts on the flash's on on barry's wrist where if he stops running or if he if he if he drops below 600 miles per hour then the bomb will go off so so again another another reference or another homage if you will <clears throat> and so so yeah the mystery behind Harrison Wells was was very well done while at the same time again really good villain really Mark Hamill if I had to describe his performance here it's basically the Joker his his version of the Joker crossed with the Anthony Hopkins version of Hannibal Lecter. That's really the best way I can describe this, and it's it's beautiful. Because he is A, you can tell he is having a lot of fun with this. And and B, 
as much fun as he is having and as as much as he hams it up at at points and you know how no matter how ridiculous he can get at times he never really stops being menacing i mean you always bought him as a force to be reckoned with you always bought him as a legitimate threat although i have to say uh the the younger trickster the younger trickster he he was fine but really really he was Honestly, he was a bit of a plot device in the sense that he was he was a tool used to to get Mark Hamill's trickster at the forefront of the episode, get him out of jail and get him at, at the forefront. But I have to say another another meta joke that I felt was a little too on the nose was was when the younger trickster basically asks, you know, why 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 me? Why single me out? Why why take me under your wing? And Mark Hamill says says it's in your blood. I am your father. Or no, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do his voice like I am your father. And I and I said, okay, uh, that maybe that's going a little too far. I mean, <laughs> for all I know, these two characters could be father and son in the comics, but the way the way that they played it in the episode, and the fact that they got Mark Hamill to play the older version, and the fact that they, that he delivered the line like that. You know, you know what they were referencing. If you don't know what they were referencing, then I suggest you seek help. Or, at the very least, I suggest you actually actually plug into popular culture and get out of the cave that you're living in. Again, it was a little too on the nose for my taste, or at least compared to, to the other homages or, or, or meta, or, you know, uh, meta stuff this episode. But yeah, for the most part, I enjoyed the villain. I enjoyed the the development that we got with Harrison Wells. <clears throat> and speaking of that, some really nice character interactions. I mean, the side characters did get kind of shortchanged in this episode. There's not really a whole lot of stuff with Cisco and Caitlin, but but seeing Barry react to you know getting his his da his dad getting kidnapped, and the fact that he has to trust Harrison Wells to help get his dad back and it all culminates in one scene that he has with Joe West not only does this, does this really strengthen the paternal relationship that these two have and make me make me believe it all the, that much more but in addition the acting was just phenomenal Grant Gustin is was just fantastic here this is where you see Barry Allen at his most vulnerable because he is really at a loss of what to do so yeah, really, really compelling stuff, and yeah, as compelling as some of the drama got, it never, it never really conflicted, or at least I didn't think so. It never really conflicted with the more over-the-top trickster plot line. So, yeah, yeah, really enjoyed this one, and I'm, I really hope we're not done with with the trickster because I really like, I really like what Mark Hamill did here, and I really like how they how they how they again paid homage to to the original flash tv tv series while at the same time doing something new with it so yeah yeah great episode and next one i believe he's teaming up with the atom so we'll see how that goes